Oh, yes. Today we've got some new PSA news that I am excited to share. Stick around. Hello to all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles friends. We are back again. It's another day. Last night, we had a really fun guest. Peter from SGC was on. Brad, the Comeback Card Investors Channel, off-centered. Definitely go check that out. That was a fun one. Uh, got into about an hour-long discussion with, with Pete, and it was just really good to kind of learn more about SGC, um, etc. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. I think we need like nine subscribers to get to 14,000. I need your help. If you could also hit the like button, button down below. That also helps just kind of spider this thing out into the universe and maybe one day the metaverse. Who knows? But it would really help us. We appreciate you being here. I'm excited to be heading out to the Atlanta Culture Collision Show today. And while I don't have a full team of content people like Jeff at Sports Card Investor does to have at that show and bringing content, I do have my iPhone. So we'll see, guys. We will see. I'll do my best to bring you some quality B-roll, and you know how we do it. It'll be probably a little weird, but it's going to be fun. PSA just announced that they are opening an East Coast facility, New Jersey. The Death Star is almost complete. 130,000 square feet, I believe, is what they're targeting or what it says and what it was reported as. But this is supposed to kind of open up their grading again to where they've got not just a West Coast operation in California, but they've also got East Coast. And I assume just from a shipping distribution standpoint, that's going to make life a little bit easier, I would assume. Gemrate recently came out with some data that I thought was really interesting. Gemrate.com, definitely check this out. But basically, they came out with a report that was the most PSA 10s of all time. And it's like, whoa, that's cool. I want to kind of hear about that. Not surprisingly, it's a lot of ultra modern stuff. Actually, it's all ultra modern stuff except for one card. 1989 Tops Traded Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card has 12,826 PSA 10s. And I think, what does it say? 70,000 plus total graded. They graded a lot of those cards. They printed a lot of those cards. But that is the only card on the list from the 80s or the 90s or the 2000s leading up to, what, 2018? Um, and so the number one spot is claimed by the Zion Williamson Prism Base at 20,599 and counting. Luca's 2018 Prism Base is right behind it at 18,249. There is also one Pokemon card on this list. I'm not a Pokemon, Pokemon? I'm not a Pokemon guy. It's a 2020 Ultra Modern Pokemon card, and there's a ton of PSA 10s of that one as well. But an interesting omission, there are not any football cards, hockey cards, kind of miscellaneous cards. You know, there's not any sort of non-sport card or just kind of the, the lesser collected uh, card, sports cards on this list, which I guess it's not super surprising, but I thought there might be one football card on this list. I think that, that it, it shocks me. And I know I'm a football card collector. I'm a football card homer. I'm a huge football card fan. And so I don't know if to take that as good news or bad news that there are no football cards. It's like uh, there's not enough demand to where people got those football cards graded or there's just maybe some opportunities there. Anyway, I will leave it up to you to decide that, but a really interesting report. So again, check that out, um, and I put the full list up so you can see it. Uh, Gemrate.com offers these really cool reports, always coming out with new things, always adding new grading companies, always adding new sports, etc. So definitely do check them out. Really, really great informational site. I want to end the video. I was watching a really, really good video done by Charlie Munger, who is a longtime investment partner with Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway. You've probably heard of them. And he made some really, really interesting points. And it's always good, I think, to kind of learn from your elders. And I don't know how old Charlie Munger is, but he's 80 plus, uh, definitely 80 plus. He's getting up there. He might be 90, um, but he still obviously got everything going. He still is as sharp as a tack. And I was watching this video that was really interesting because it was all about modern investing, kind of the 
investing of the now. It's talking about the, the, the concerns and just kind of the dangers of overprinting money and what it's done over history with other countries um, around the world and why we should be concerned about it for a variety of different reasons. I'll put a link to that video in the video description if you want to check it out, but I just thought it was great. Of course, we talk about sports cards. We're buying and selling sports cards as a hobby. There's also a lot of us, too, that are investing in all sorts of other things, and so this really kind of brings it full circle. But one comment he made, and I've also heard Mark Cuban talk about this as well, they're just sitting on a lot of cash. They are investing. Of course, Berkshire Hathaway is always investing, but they are also sitting on a lot of cash, not because they want to, but because they don't see values because the prices are too high for what they're looking for, for talking about equities. You know, when they're looking at evaluating companies, there's just not a lot out there that they think is a good value right now just because pricing is very high. But he does say, look, if you're, if you have a 30, 40, 50 year horizon, you can't really time this thing out. You know, you have to kind of just get in where you can kind of pick your, pick your spots. Um, but I thought that that was, it was a good takeaway because he was acknowledging the challenges of trying to figure out investing in this current market, you know, in this current economy, global economy that we have. It's, it's, it's tricky because it is kind of a, a black swan event where we've got, you know, we've got, we've got some inflation, you know, we've got overprinting of money, you know, we've printed what 20%. I think there's estimates of 20% of all the U S currency was printed over the last two years. That's astronomical. Um, so it's just trying to figure all these pieces out and where are the values. He also brought up a really interesting point, and I and I see this too when I you know think about my grandparents and just old, you know elderly people that I've talked to. They were they're a lot happier with a lot less. And, you know, he, he makes a point in this video and it, it actually really, really interesting is humans, humans by nature are envious and we live in the society. Of course, you've got the Instagrams of the world. You've got the social media, you know, platforms where everybody's putting their highlights, their daily highlights up and humans just being envious by nature. It just kind of plays into that keeping up with the Joneses and plays into uh, the, our, our lack of being able to separate some of that stuff and just being able to be happy with what we have, you know, and how does that, what does it, what does that mean for sports cards? Well, you know, being happy with the collection that you've got, being happy with, with where you are in certain parts of your life, always trying to improve. Obviously we're always trying to improve, but there's also an element though of, are we not just existing, you know, just being happy in the moment and making the most of what we have. And, and, and what he was saying is just previous generations, they just had a lot less as far as just stuff, as far as services, not just stuff, but just the advances technology logically that have happened over the last 50 years are insane. And actually he makes the uh, comparison of the last 100 years. So he's looking at uh, 1920 to 2020 roughly and just the advances that have been made compared to 1820 to 1920 where there was really very little advancement. And he makes just a great point, you know, of of we've just gotten extremely spoiled really, especially in the United States, where there's just so much opportunity, there's so much going on and so much exorbitance. There's so much excess, you know, so when we feel a little bit of pain, you know, we've got to have some stimulus, you know, and it's like, but it's just not helping us. And because of all these things and with politicians having to kind of cave or feeling the need to cave to these sorts of things, it might make things harder for us in the long run because we're not taking short-term pain of a recession. He makes comment about um, in the 70s, of course, you had massive inflation. There was big issues in the 70s. And, and I can't I can't remember the name of, of the Fed, the, the Fed guy that essentially kind of turned it on its head to where it kind of forced a recession, but it was a it was short term pain for longer term gains. It was kind of saving those, you know, saving us, you know, essentially from a longer term of a pain. So I, I wonder about this because we're in kind of a weird territory right now with a lot of this stuff and it'll we'll have to see how it all plays out. Uh, but I'll put that video because it's a good video just to kind of take in. Again, Charlie Munger is one opinion, but he's a guy that's been around. He's seen some things. Um, and he's just a, one of the people that I follow to kind of take in information from uh, when, when we're trying to figure out just economics, our own personal finances, et cetera. So guys, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Stay healthy. Stay awesome. I will see you in Atlanta at Culture Collision. We'll talk to you later.